Okay, we're going to take a look at enthalpy in this particular episode. Um, to begin with, we're going to take a look at the enthalpy tables and find out what standard conditions and standard enthalpy of formation are. Um, an enthalpy table, I know this is going to be way too small to read, but an enthalpy table is just a um, basically a collection of values that gives the enthalpy of formation, the entropy, and the um, Gibbs free energy of formation. These values can also be found in the back of the textbook or online. Um, you do not have to memorize any of these values. If you need them, they will be given to you. All right, standard conditions and standard enthalpy of formation. Standard conditions is essentially the most stable state of a substance at sort of room, room conditions. So basically one atmosphere and 25 degrees Celsius or 298K. So the standard state, um, we're going to show by using a little, looks like a degree symbol, but we're gonna put it on the outside of whatever we're talking about. Um, some people will put it, let's say for instance, we're doing the delta H reaction. Some people would, will put the knot before they write the reaction. Some people will write the knot after the reaction. It all means the same thing, and it just means that that means that this reaction is happening at standard conditions. So in order to get the enthalpy of a reaction, um, you're going to take the enthalpy of the reaction is equal to the change in enthalpy of the formation for the products minus the change in enthalpy of formation for the reactants, which is very similar to what we had been doing. Okay, you can kind of take a look at the way this works. Um, for molar enthalpy of formation, compounds are formed from their standard, from their elements in their standard states. And the other component of this is that it forms one mole of one product. If you have the enthalpy of formation for something that's already in its standard state, that value is zero. That's already its most common form. And then so we just kind of take a look at, we've looked at the formation of water several times in this unit. We've said 2H2 plus O2 yields 2H2. So we can see in this particular reaction that we have some odd coefficients here. We are only making one mole of water from one mole of hydrogen gas and half of a mole of oxygen gas. So these enthalpies of formation are the only time where you're allowed to have fractional coefficients. All right, let's go down to exercise 16. The molar enthalpy of formation for silver chloride is negative 127.1 kilojoules per mole. Write the balanced equation for which the enthalpy of reaction equals the enthalpy of formation. Okay, so we first need to write an equation and we are making silver chloride. It is a negative value. Okay, so that means that that's exothermic and it means we have to be making it from silver which is solid in its standard state and chlorine gas which is Cl2 gas in its standard state so since we can only make one mole of the product, we have to use a coefficient of one half right here. In order to prove that the enthalpy of the reaction is the same as the enthalpy of formation, we have to use the idea of taking the difference. So the delta H of the reaction is going to be equal to the enthalpy of formation for AgCl minus the enthalpy of formation for the silver and half a mole worth of the chlorine. So if we go and we look at the values for those, the question gives us the value for delta HF AGCL, that's kilojoules, and then because the silver and the chlorine are both in their standard state, those have both a value of zero. So we can prove then that that particular reaction that we drew has the same value. You can complete B in essentially the same format, um, remembering that alcohol is an OH group, 
and methyl is a one carbon alcohol. 